हेलो एवरीवन वेलकम टू माय चैनल ऑन इंजीनियरिंग मैथमेटिक्स इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न एन इंपॉर्टेंट टूल इन मैथमेटिक्स कॉल्ड एज प्रोबेबिलिटी मेनली वी विल फोकस ऑन डेफिनेशन ऑफ प्रोबेबिलिटी एंड वी विल सी सम एग्जांपल्स बेस्ड ऑन इट सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल सी सम प्री रिक्विसाइड टर्मिनोलॉजीज द फर्स्ट इन द लिस्ट इज random experiment random experiment is a process by which we observe something uncertain it can also be seen as the process which turns into several outcomes let me tell you some of the regularly used random experiments the first in the list is rolling a die or tossing a coin or drawing a card from the deck next term in the list is outcome it is the result of a random experiment for example when we roll a die we can get number 2 on the face or when we toss a coin we can get head or when we draw a card from the deck we can get ace of hearts so these are outcomes of the experiment discussed earlier now let's go ahead for next term it is sample space sample space is the set of all possible outcomes of the random experiment for example when we roll a die the corresponding sample space consists of numbers 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 similarly in the experiment of tossing a coin we can get sample space as h comma t where h stands for getting a head and t stands for getting a tail now let's proceed for next term it is an event event is an outcome or defined collection of outcomes of random experiment for example conduct an experiment of tossing a coin the outcomes of this experiment consist of head or tails so we can attach events to this experiment as follows let a be the event of getting a head and b be the event of getting a tail any other event apart from these two events is impossible event in this particular example for example getting a head and tail in the single event this is possible only if the coin is unfair guys i hope you understood these basic terms that i have taught you so far for example random experiment outcomes sample space and event now using these terminologies we are going to define probability probability is simply how likely something is to happen it calculates the chances of happening something so we assign probability measure as p of a to any event a this is the value between 0 and a it shows how likely the event is that means if p of a takes value closer to 0 then there are less chances of happening event a and p of a takes value close to 1 then there are more chances of happening of event a if event a happens in m ways and fails in n ways then all these ways are equally likely to occur and the probability of a is defined as number of cases favorable to event a upon total number of mutually exclusive and equally likely cases so here the total number of cases are m plus n and the total number of cases favorable for event a is m therefore p of a is m upon m plus n simply p of a can be written as n of a upon n of s where n of a stands for number of favorable outcomes to event a and n of s stands for total number of outcomes therefore p of a is now become n of a upon n of s well this is formal definition of probability now let us see axiomatic definition of probability the first axiom says for any event a probability of a is always greater than or equal to 0 that means it cannot be negative second axiom says probability of a sample space is always equal to 1 and the third axiom says if a1 a2 a3 are disjoint events that means in these events nothing is common then 
probability of a1 union a2 union a3 and so on is equal to probability of a1 plus probability of a2 plus probability of a3 and so on. I hope guys you understood both the definitions of probability. Now let us proceed to see some of the rules of probability. It includes addition and multiplication rule. First we see addition rules. The first rule in this says if events are mutually exclusive or disjoint then probability of A union B is equal to probability of A plus probability of B. Here in this Venn diagram events A and B are mutually exclusive or disjoint. There is nothing common between these events. Similarly here you can see events A and B are not mutually exclusive or disjoint. There is this part common in both event A and event B. Such events are called as inclusive events. And in case of inclusive events, probability of A union B is given by probability of A plus probability of B minus probability of A intersection B. Now let us go for multiplication rule. First we see multiplication rule for mutually exclusive or disjoint events. It says probability of A intersection B is probability of A into probability of B. And in case of mutually inclusive events, we have to use conditional probability. That we are going to see in my next lecture. Now we proceed for some examples. So let us go ahead with first example. The question is, in a random experiment of throwing a dice, find the probability of getting 6 on the face. I hope the question is very much clear to you. Experiment is throwing a dice and we have to find the probability of getting 6 on the face. Let us look at the answer. First of all, we will note down the all possible outcomes in the sample space. So here, sample space will consist of numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Apart from this, any other outcome is an impossible outcome. Since there are 6 elements in sample space, so n of s will be 6. Next, we define an event whose probability we wanted to find out. Here we are asked to find the probability of getting 6 on the face. So we define an event of getting 6 on the face. So let that event be A. And we know that there is only one outcome that is this 6 is favoring this event. So n of a will be 1. As n of a denotes number of favorable outcomes, here the number of favorable outcome is only 1. So n of a is 1. Next we find the probability of a. Therefore, probability of getting 6 on the face that is probability of a given by n of a upon n of s is equal to n of a is 1, n of s is 6. So it is equal to 1 upon 6. So this is probability of getting 6 on the face when a fair dice is thrown. I hope guys you understood this example. Next I have an assignment for you. A similar type of example is given as a homework. Its final solution is also written over here so that you can tally your answer. Guys I request you to write me in comment box whether you got this answer or not. Now let's proceed for example number 2. Here we are given that in a random experiment of tossing two coins, find the probability of getting one head and one tail. So the experiment is tossing two coins and we are asked to find the probability of getting one head and one tail. That means one, one coin will give us head and another coin will give us tail. Let us proceed with solution. First of all, we will note down the elements in the sample space. So here the possible outcomes are head head, tail tail, head tail and tail head. So sample space will consist of these four outcomes. Therefore clearly n of s is 4. Next we define an event whose probability we wanted to find out. Here we are asked to find the probability of getting one head and one tail. No matter what is the order of getting head and tail. So let us define a be an event of getting one head and one tail and we know that here there are two outcomes 
particularly this one and this one favoring this this event ht and th so clearly n of a is 2 now let us proceed to find out probability of a we write therefore probability of getting one head and one tail is p of a is equal to n of a upon n of s n of a is 2 n of s is 4 so p of a is 2 by 4 you can further reduce this as 1 by 2 i hope you understood this solution now next is an assignment for you a similar type of example is given here as a homework its final solution is 3 by 8 guys please solve these examples at your end and please write me in comment box whether you are getting these answers or not let us proceed for example number 3 here in a random experiment of drawing a card from deck find the probability of getting a king is asked so we are given a deck of card and the experiment is drawing a single card out of that deck so this can be done in 52 c one ways why 52 because there are 52 different cards in a deck of cards we are drawing one card randomly out of those 52 cards so this task can be done in 52 choose one ways and 52 c1 is 52 therefore n of s is 52 so first of all we mention what is sample space so sample space may consist all cards in the deck of cards therefore n of s is 52 next we define the event whose probability we wanted to find out here we have to find the probability of getting a king so we define a be an event of getting a king and we know that in a deck of cards there are four different cards having king face card of hearts king of spade king of diamonds and king of clubs so there are four cards favoring this event event of getting king therefore n of a has to be four now let's proceed to write probability of a therefore probability of a that is n of a upon n of s is equal to 4 upon 52 you can further reduce it to 1 by 13 therefore probability of a is 1 by 13 i hope guys you understood this solution now it is your turn to solve similar example here its final solution is 1 by 2 now let's go ahead for example number 4 here we are given that a bag contains 20 balls three of which are red color six are green color four are blue color two are white color and five are yellow color the experiment is one ball is selected out of these balls at random and we are asked to find the probability of the following events first event is the ball is either red or green second event is the ball is not blue and third event is the ball is either red or white or blue let us solve this example we will one by one find their probability first we will note down the sample space here a bag contains 20 balls and we have to select one ball at random then in sample space we have 20 c1 ways to choose that one ball and 20 c1 is 20 therefore s is or n of s is 20 next we define all these possible events so here i write let r g b w and y be the events that the ball is respectively red green blue white or yellow so this r event is associated for selecting a red ball g is an event that the selected ball is green b is an event that the selected ball is blue w is an event that the selected ball is white and y is the event that the selected ball is yellow now let's find out the number of favorable outcomes to all these events since there are three red balls in this bag 
the number of favorable outcomes to event R is 3. Therefore, N of R is 3. Similarly, there are 6 green balls. So, the number of outcomes favorable to event G is 6. Similarly, N of D will be 4, N of W will be 2 and N of Y will be 5. I hope guys you understood these values. Now let us proceed to find the probability that the selected ball is either red or green. Since selecting a red ball and selecting a green ball are two different events and we have to find the either of these two events probability then this can be done using union of these two events. Selecting a red ball is given by R and selecting a green ball is given by G event. So we have to find the probability of R union G and according to addition rule of probability, probability of R union G is probability of R plus probability of G. Since R and G are mutually exclusive events, probability of R union G has to be probability of R plus probability of G. Now let us find out probability of R and probability of G separately and add them. Probability of R is N of R upon N of S. So it is 3 by 20 and probability of G is N of G upon N of S. So it is 6 by 20. When you add these two, you will get 9 by 20. So probability of getting a red or green ball is 9 by 20. I hope guys you understood this part. Now let us proceed to find probability that the selected ball is not blue. Here to find this probability I would like to recall that probability of entire sample space is 1. Entire sample space here means probability that the selected ball is red or green or blue or white or yellow. So to find the probability that the selected ball is not blue we will subtract probability that the selected ball is blue from 1. So probability that the ball is not blue is equal to 1 minus probability that the selected ball is blue and the probability that the selected ball is blue is equal to n of b upon n of s that is 4 by 20. So we subtract 4 by 20 from 1 which is equal to 16 by 20. I hope guys you understood this solution. Now let us proceed to find probability that the ball selected is either red or white or blue. Once again, we are going to use the addition rule of probability. According to which, probability that the ball selected is either red or white or blue is given by P of R union W union B, which is same as P of R plus P of W plus P of B. And we have already found what is P of R, P of W and P of B in previous cases A and B. They are respectively 3 by 20, 2 by 20 and 4 by 20. So when you add them together, you will have answer 9 by 20. I hope guys you understood this solution. Now next example is for you. A similar example is asked over here. Its final solution is also given. Guys, please write me in comment box whether you got this solution or not. In my next lecture, we will see some more examples on this topic. Till then, keep watching my videos. Thank you all of you. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe my YouTube channel and press the bell icon to get updates about my new videos.